Why start a race if you don't plan on finishing it? The doctrine of once saved, always saved leads to nowhere if you are not prepared to do what it takes works to finish the race. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do not tell others that works has nothing to do with salvation and doing them can't save them because I will only save those who love me. When a person is deathly ill, do not think your prayers were not answered if they die, since they are now in a place where they will never die or get sick again. Getting caught doing wrong is usually enough to deter a person from repeating the behavior. Having to prove they did it so that you can hold it against them and punish them for it is usually just a waste. The natural tendency, if someone does you wrong, is to go and tell others. So maybe while you're confessing your own sins to a priest, you could also use it as an opportunity to tell about the sins committed against you. Telling a priest who is sworn to secrecy will not only help you alleviate the desire to tell others, but it will keep you from later feeling any guilt that comes with unrighteously displaying the faults of another in public. Following the rule, work if you expect to eat, is imperative for such a greedy world. The thorn in Paul's side, which incidentally is the same thorn in a lot of you, are the weak points in his teachings, such as publicly condemning others and downplaying the need for works. These things, as far as I'm concerned, is where Paul fumbled the ball, because they are not very righteous, and therefore border on iniquity. Satan has convinced a lot of you, including Paul, that these false teachings come from heaven. This is not so, but at least Paul had enough sense to admit that part of what he said was probably not correct, even though he couldn't figure out which and begged God to remove it, which is more than what most of you have done to ensure that what you teach is right. And the only reason God did not simply remove the thorn himself is because he wanted to bestow upon me the grace of delivering the perfect message. He knew that by allowing me to be the one who removes all thorns, my authority over all things would be
clearly revealed. The prophet abandoned Jerusalem when he didn't mention it by name in the Quran and told his followers that they no longer had to face Jerusalem when they pray. For the sake of peace, I suggest that his followers do the same and abandon any thought of acquiring. The Antichrist is defeated by the breath of my mouth. As soon as I said, Jesus is Lord and accepted him as my Lord and Savior, the part of me that was against Christ was overcome. It's sad that some blacks would rather give up their place in heaven, their inheritance, their eternal life, their father, and their right to be called a child of God, than follow what they incorrectly perceive to be a white man's religion. Cursed are the proud of heart, for theirs is the kingdom of darkness. You're disrespecting Allah by not calling him Abba, because you are not referring to him in his fullness. Muslims can accept that Mary can have a child without sex, but they find it impossible to believe that God can have a child without sex. Only a son of God can see God the Father. A man cannot. 999 Muslims out of a thousand aren't going to heaven. The only one that is, is the one that is actually a Christian. Christians owe the Jews a debt of gratitude because if it wasn't for the Jews, there wouldn't be any Christians. Even though sin may cause some to fly the coop and never return, the Spirit is continually working within us to get us to return home in order that we may experience the righteousness and the peace the kingdom offers. 